Okay, and we're back after setting up the showdown board. Let's go ahead and read the intro to the showdown. There once was a beast that wanted to feel how soft its fur was. Since it could not reach its own back, it killed many other creatures and spent time rubbing its paws over them. They say that when the monster finally killed a human, it fell in love with their soft hair, and its paws grew into a pair of fine human hands. Awesome. So, in the setup, we start with the tall grass, which we've placed. What the tall grass does for you, if you haven't played before, is it'll give you plus two invasion while you're in the grass. If they have a priority target token, or if you just want don't want to be a threat, you can spend a action, and you could actually get rid of the priority target token or make yourself not a threat. Um, don't usually use that option, but we always use the plus two evasion. It's always good to be in the grass. Uh, the second thing we got was the ore vein uh, when we drew randomly for the uh, terrain. And the ore vein really, uh, you just try to get yourself a piece of iron. Iron is really important for later on in the game. And for the last card, uh, we do have debris. So you can search the debris. Um, you could get knocked down. Uh, you could get a random uh, terrain. What we're hoping for is a really high roll so we can get the scrap sword or a bone blade. And finally, based upon the uh, hunt events, we do have ground fighting. So here's ground fighting. It starts in play. I'll read it to you. It's a mood, so it's out here on the traits and moods section of the tracker. The monster flops on its side, waiting for attackers to draw near. While ground fighting is play, do not draw an AI card. Then, when you actually wound the monster, then you discard ground fighting. So what that's going to allow us to do is do anything we want, because he's not going to be drawing AI cards. We can do anything we want as long as we don't do an action in the blue zone, which is all the spaces, all the spaces around him. So we can search debris, we can get this iron, and we can set up all of our survivors ready to strike him. And then somebody's going to have to throw a founding stone because I don't have a ranged weapon, and then they're going to wound him. And when that happens, we'll discard ground fighting, and we'll resolve hits as normal. And um, hopefully we don't draw that ground fighting again, because once again, we don't have any weapons that will actually um, allow us to... Um, hit him from a distance. Uh, I should have bought bone darts, or I, I couldn't buy a bow yet. Um, I usually do that just in case this card comes up. But let's go ahead and who are we going to have hit first? Well, we're going to we're gonna probably start with Zeus, because we'll march it around. Hopefully it ends on Eve, because Eve has a founding stone, and hopefully she can get a bone blade. If she doesn't, that's her fault, and she'll be using fist and tooth. So. All right, so let's go ahead and do Zeus. So Zeus is standing on top of the iron, uh, well, the ore vein, and it says roll a d10. If carrying a pickaxe, you roll 2d10 instead. Hopefully we get a high enough number. That number is a 5. Okay, and a 5 is find something shiny, gain one iron strange resource, archive the terrain. So away goes our iron, our ore vein. And we'll grab an iron out of the strange resource. So here's the iron card. So it says harder than bone. And like I said, later on in the uh, in the campaign, uh, you actually um, I'll just put it out here for now because it's a community resource. Even if he dies, the iron comes back to the settlement as long as I have a survivor that lives. Um, uh, it, it's good for building a lot of uh, uh, scrap weapons and higher level weapons later on. Um, so he went ahead and searched that, and now he'll move five. One, two, three, four, five. And he'll end his turn. Adam will go ahead and go one, two, three, four, five, into the grass. He's not going to use any actions. He's just going to sit there. And he's going to watch the lion as the lion is trying to bait him into attacking. But Adam's smarter than that. We'll go ahead and do Eve. So Eve is standing in front of the debris. And the debris card states, roll a d10 to scavenge. If carrying a scavenger kit, add plus three. Well, I don't have it. So 
All right, here's the important rule. So what we really need to do is roll a high number. So that would be a nine. So on a seven through nine, find useful gear, gain one bone blade gear card, and archive the train. So we'll go ahead and archive the debris. And this is excellent. So we actually gained a bone blade. It's not a good weapon, but remember, Eve's about to chuck her founding stone. So she's not going to have a weapon here in a second. Um, but now she does. So the bone blade's a uh, two attacks. It's a six plus to hit. It's a two strength, so it's better than the founding stone. It is frail, though, so you hit a super dense location. It will shatter. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And I think she'll stay there. And Athena. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So that's the end of my turn. But with ground fighting in play, uh, the white lion doesn't actually get his AI turn. So we'll rotate the... It's here. This is where he would have had his AI turn, but he skips it. And now we will just go ahead and set up our survivors. One, two, three, four, five. One. I think we'll stop right there, and Zeus will come up. One, two, three, um, four, five. We'll, we'll go ahead and move back there. Okay. Um, again, it is the White Lion's turn, and the White Lion is going to do nothing again. Again, because he's trying to lure our characters into attacking him first. So what he doesn't know is, and I hate you, I hate doing this, we've only got one Founding Stone left, and uh, that Founding Stone is sitting on Athena, but we'll go ahead and chuck the Founding Stone. So the Founding Stone gets thrown and archived, and it will automatically hit him. It automatically does a critical wound. Uh, so ground fighting says... When the monster spins, okay, um, when the white lion is wounded, discard ground fighting. Okay, so this is <laughs> quite amazing. So we hit the gold, glorious main. It's impervious. Impervious hit locations cannot be wounded. A wound or critical wound will not remove AI or defeat the monster. So he's actually not wounded yet. Um, if the attacker is insane, a critical wound, so it was a critical wound, and we gain the shimmering main white lion resource. Eh, that's not really a fair trade for the... For the Founding Stone, if the attacker is insane, the sheer frustration grants them power, uh, gain one strength token. Well, unfortunately, Eve is not insane. Um, so, down goes Glorious Main. And, as a small token, we do get the Shimmering Main. Now, the Shimmering Main is used to make the Lion Headdress, but you can archive this and gain two basic hide resources also. So, it's just as good as getting too hide. Um, i tell you what we're going to do now. We're going to do nothing. So she chucked her Founding Stone and didn't even do a wound, so he didn't even flinch at that. I'm going to have to use the Founding Stone that Athena's got and take him out. But the reason why I don't want to just attack him is he will go ahead and do a basic attack with plus two speed and plus one damage. So that would end up being four attacks, and it ends up being two damage for each hit location. And... My survivors are not armored up um, for, for that kind of assault. So Athena's going to go ahead and move back. Uh, one, two, and, well, first of all, Eve threw that Founding Stone. So she'll come out. One, two. Athena's going to move back one. One, she'll stay. Eh, one. Yeah, she's going to stay there. Okay, so again, monster's turn. The monster does nothing because it's still baiting us, even though we did chop off some of his hair. And unfortunately, Athena's going to use her, her founding stone. I have no founding stones left on the second hunt or the second showdown. Automatic hit. Automatic crit. This one will actually wound the lion. So what it says is, let's go ahead and take the wound. And it says, go ahead and discard ground fighting. Um, so we've got 
Critical wound. The monster howls in pain as the blow breaks its elbow with a sickening crunch. Non-death survivors, that's everybody, gains plus three insanity and may stand if they're knocked down. So that actually is awesome. Um, not only did we do the wound, everybody gets three insanity. So that doesn't mean we remove the box we filled in. The box is still filled in. We just end up getting three insanity. So uh, not not bad. I'll, I'll take that. Um, and now the white line will stand up. Again, no survivor took an action within the zone of death, which is around him, because Hera was out. I mean, Athena was outside the zone of death, so he just stands up. Um, and we go ahead and discard ground fighting. Oh, just a second. Okay. The monster flops on its side, waiting for attackers to draw near. While ground fighting is in play, do not draw AI. We didn't. Uh, when survivors spend action in the zone of death, nobody did. When the white lion is wounded, discard ground fighting. Oh, Okay, well, what that means is the white lion is still flopped on his side. I don't see anywhere where it says... Well, actually, it doesn't say the white lion is knocked down either. All it says is the white lion flops on its side waiting, uh, and he's playing dead. He's not actually knocked down. So when the white lion is wounded, discard ground fight. Okay. All right, so following along, the card didn't say he was knocked down. It just said that he flopped on his side. It didn't say do anything with the model. All it says is flopped on the side. So when that happens, we discard the card. He's up now. And now that uh, Athena's already done her turn, now we can do our turn with everybody else. So we'll go ahead and start with Adam. Adam, our tank, is going to go ahead and try to hit. So he's looking at the Bone Axe. He gets two attacks. It's a six plus to hit, but he's attacking from the rear. So it's a five plus to hit. So a seven and a one. So he does hit once. And in the strange hand, oh, come on, crit. What Adam, he, Adam was the one that uh, um, is all tanked up. It'd be great to have him chop off the strange hand. Give him a plus one strength, just like Zeus got last time. Um, so he has the bone axe, which is a strength three. No modifiers on his character. And the white lion at level one has a toughness of eight. So with a strength three, what you're looking at is a five to wound him. That's a crit. Critical wound. You hack off the monster's hand. Spend one survival to treasure this moment and gain plus one permanent strength. It is a persistent injury, so we'll keep it in play. And it affects some AI cards. So persistent injury. Here's the AI card we're pulling off. And... Yes, Adam's going to spend that survival, so he has no survival, to get plus one permanent strength. And I'm going to write on the great deeds, cut off strange hand, white lion, level one. So after doing that, I think what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead Move him back one. Oh, hey. yeah, we'll move him back one. So what I'm doing is I'm freeing up the blind spot for my other characters. Um, Zeus is going to go ahead and go in. So Zeus is going to... Let me think about this. The reason I'm hesitating is because if I have all four of my characters in that grass and he turns around and grabs, he's going to grab every single one of my characters. I really don't want that to happen. Uh, we should probably go ahead and have him attack Adam, um, even though Adam won't be in the grass. Or we should go ahead and let Zeus and Eve attack from the sides. Um, or expose Adam. Um, let's see. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Um... I should have thought about this a little more before I moved. I could put Adam in the grass and make him the closest character. One, two, three, four, five. If only Zeus wasn't in the way. Adam can stay there. But again, Adam's going to be in the blind spot. So it's not necessarily 
true that Adam's going to actually be the closest survivor. If it's closest survivor in field of view, he won't be in field of view. Um, tell me if you guys would do something different. Adam's coming out. All right, because I'm going to make try to make Adam the target. So Zeus is going to go in. He's going to attack twice, and remember, Zeus has uh, no weapon. He's trying to specialize in Fist and Tooth uh, as soon as I get that proficiency. He does have a strength of one. So Fist and Tooth is going to say 8 plus. It's a 7 plus to actually hit the white line. And that's two misses. It's a 6 and a 4. And now Eve's going to come in. So Eve does have a Bone Blade because she found that in the debris. Two. It's a 6 plus. It's a 5 plus because I'm hitting from the rear. So that's a 6 and a 10. Again, there's no perfect hit uh, verbiage on any of the cards or anything yet. There will be later, um, but for right now, a 10 is just an automatic hit. So that's two hits, so we'll draw two hit locations. And you're looking at Fuzzy Groin, and you're looking at the Beast Femur. So the Beast Femur really doesn't have any negatives. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the Femur first. The Fuzzy Groin doesn't have any negatives, but if I do crit... Um, that makes the white lion much tougher. Um, so here we go. The Beast Femur. Um, it is a strength 2 weapon. She doesn't have any modifiers, and he's a strength uh, toughness 8. So we're looking at a 6 to wound. So 50% chance to wound the femur. That does not. And a 50% chance to wound the fuzzy groin. And that does not. Sometimes that happens. Okay. Now the white lion's finally going to get his first turn. So Zeus ends up being the monster controller, but Zeus is in the blind spot, so we probably won't be picking him. Try to pick, try to pick Adam. So the card we pull out is Bat Around. Closest threat facing in range. Nobody's facing. Closest threat in field of view. So that would be either Adam or Athena. We're going to make it Adam. And then it says two attacks. It's a five plus to hit. One damage. And after damage, the monster playfully bats the survivor around. They suffer brain damage equal to the monster's level. That's not so bad. So it's a two hit, two attacks. It's a five plus to hit. Um, Adam sitting at two evasion uh, because of his vest and because of his monster grace. So he needs a seven plus to hit Adam. <laughs> of course, it's two hits. And we'll see what the location is. The foot and the waist. Okay. So he's going to take a light injury to the foot, and his armor on the waist is now at zero. He also takes one brain damage from the white lion playfully batting him around. And that is the end of that attack. Not That's not a bad AI card. We want to keep that card on the deck um, because it's a five plus to hit. It's one of the weaker attacks that the white lion actually has. But that is the end of the white lion's turn. So... Uh, what we'll end up doing first is we're going to move Adam. Uh, one, two, three, four. Now, the reason I, I move Adam is because the white lion tends to run forward. And I, I, I'm not going to have my other survivors um, necessarily uh, all attacking the monster while Adam's in the front. So let's get him out of the front. And... He'll attack the monster from the side. So it's a 6 plus to hit with the Bone Axe. There's no modifiers on this. So that's a 10 and a 4. So that's one hit. The hit location card is the Scapular Deltoid. And look at that. The failure says he'll run forward and grab somebody. So hopefully Adam doesn't fail. He's got a strength of 3 on this Bone Axe. Oh, I, I apologize. Um, that weapon was savage. So my mistake, I should have taken two wounds off of the white line, which would have taken that around and given me the whatever AI card is coming up. Uh, but that's my fault. And so I'll record that as one mistake that I can't move back from. Uh, the reason I record one mistake is I consider that a cheat now. And there's a certain uh, settlement event if you get the expansions or the, uh, the extra um, sets with gameplay that says you count the number of cheats and it affects your dice roll, uh, believe it or not. So I'm going to go ahead and record that on my settlement sheet as my first cheat.
expect a lot of those. <laughs> I don't intentionally try to cheat, but sometimes it happens. Okay, uh, let's go back to it. So strength of three, toughness eight, so he needs a five to move. So that fails. Full move the monster forward in a straight line, cancel all hits out of range. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And that is that. One, two, three, four, five. Now we can go and chase that white lion, um, which gets us further and further away from this grass. Um, don't tend to actually like to do that too much, uh, but he will come back. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we can have him make, make him attack one of the people in the grass. Um, maybe Zeus. Um, and move everybody else out of that. So let's do that. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Move her into the grass. And Zeus is just going to sit there. So go ahead and move this card up to Adam. He's the monster controller. And we'll let the monster have his turn. Maul. Victim of grab last round. Well, nobody got grabbed last round. Closest knockdown survivor in range. Well, nobody's knocked down. No target. So there is no target. He's just going to sniff. So, I, again, not a bad card. Sniff says the white lion sniffs the air and ends its turn. Until the end of the next round, all survivors are threats, despite any effects that say otherwise. When a level 3 uh, white lion performs sniff, it gains plus 1 accuracy token. Okay, so he's just going to smell, make sure he's got everybody's smell. So then he's going to come back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So as long as we're not here... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. As long as we're not here, and as long as we're not here... 10, 10, 10, 10, the white line is just going to come and charge at us. Um, I tell you what, since Adam just moved, he's going to go ahead and use this ability on his card, the Rawhide head vest, Headband. And uh, we'll take a look at these top two cards. So you've got Size Up, which is not bad, which just picks a random target and tries to knock them down, but he's not going to get any closer. So... Revenge will pick the, the last survivor to wound in range. Well, the last survivor that wounded him um, actually was was Adam. So we could let him do that, and Adam, being the monster puller, will get a insanity. Um, I don't want to see this in the deck, but because size up is such a nothing card, but I need to have him get closer. So we'll we'll put we'll put. Revenge on the top. Okay? So that's what my characters do, and they'll just sit there. So, again, Monster Controller, Adam, it says Revenge. So we knew that was coming. Uh, pick target. Last survivor wound. That would be Adam. So let's give him an insanity. Okay? And he will move an attack. So he's just going to move his normal six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Trying to get to Adam. But he doesn't quite reach that. And revenge is now done. Okay, survivor's turn. Let's go ahead and move Adam. One, two, three, four. I, I know that the two women are in front. But Adam does have the axe. So I want to give him a chance. Um, he does have plus one strength now. So it's going to be two attacks. It's a six plus to hit. Five plus because I'm in the blind spot. So that's one critical hit. Well, one perfect hit, but it doesn't count. And I hit the beast knee. You hit the, the white lion's sturdy kneecap. So now with the three strength and the one strength, it's a four. He's got an eight toughness. I need a four plus to actually wound him. So that didn't wound. Um, there is no failure result on this, so that's not a bad thing. And Eve will now come around. One, two. Oops, I don't think she can make it around. Um, one, two, three, four. Athena's going to come around. She doesn't have a weapon, so she's using Fist and Two. It is an eight plus to hit this white lion, so that's one hit. And she'll hit him in the beast's ribs. 
there is a wound um, reaction to this right here. So let's see if she does. It's a strength of zero on her, and she doesn't have any modifiers. So she needs an eight to actually wound this white woman. And she failed. So into the discard pile that goes. Um, all right, Zeus. One, two. Let's go ahead and leave him there, because I want... No, we'll come around to that. Three, four. Okay, so Zeus is going to attack from the back. Um, it is a seven plus, because he's using Fist and Two. So that's one eight, one hit. There is a failure, and the White Lion actually jumps back, which actually makes him move forward. Um, so let's see what happens here. He has a plus one strength, so he's going to need a seven to win this line. Failure. The white lion jumps back. Without turning, move the white lion one space directly away from the attacker. So that's what happens. Come on, guys. Um, and now we've got Eve. One, two, three. I think we're going to stop there. Yeah, I think we'll stop there. So Eve needs a six plus to hit him with the bone sword. So there's an eight and a two. So that is one hit. Ah, uh, of course. Um, you got the trap. The attacker is caught in the white lion's ruse and is savagely mauled. Attacker is doomed, meaning I can't spend survival. Perform basic action. Target the attacker. Okay. Um, so the basic action says closest survivor, which she'll be the uh, target. It is two attacks. It is a two plus to hit her and it's a one damage. So it's actually two attacks. It's a four plus to hit her because she is in the grass. So hopefully the grass does something here. So there's a three and a four, so it's one hit on her. So the grass did actually help her, and it hits her in the body. So if you remember from the hunt, she already took a wound to the body. She can't dodge this. That's a heavy injury to her. It's gonna knock her down. Okay, and we will go ahead and shuffle the hit location deck, putting all the discards back in there, except for the strange hand. It's a persistent injury, so it stays out. Okay, shuffling. I always like to do this. Odds I cut. Okay, I'll cut it. So I cut it, put the hit location deck down, and she was the last survivor to actually um, attack. So we'll rotate the monster controller card, and it is to Athena, and the white lion will. We know what this card is, don't we? Size up. Random threat in field of view. So everybody except for Eve is a threat, because Eve is knocked down, so she's not a threat. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three. So he's gonna target Athena. Athena is the monster controller. Even on randoms, I go ahead and give my survivor insanity. Uh, the monster controller says if a player targets their survivor. It doesn't say um, chooses the target. It says when they target the survivor. Uh, I've seen some facts online that say, hey, it's any time your survivor is targeted. And so we'll go ahead and at this point give, give her the insanity. Size up says, intimidate. The monster stares down its prey, turn to face the target, and roll a d10 on a 4+. plus. I suffer a brain damage per monster level, and I'm knocked down. Oops, I really should have rolled it in the box. But that was a 6. So she is knocked down. And she's going to go ahead and suffer a brain damage. I just gave her insanity, so I'll just go ahead and take it away. And this card goes into the discard pile, which is fine. I don't mind size up. Okay, so Eve was actually knocked down on the survivor's turn. That means on the lion's turn. I'm going to stand up. If Eve had been knocked down on the white lion's turn, then she would stay knocked down. But luckily she was knocked down on uh, the survivor's turn, so now it's the end of the white lion's turn. She gets to stand up. And it is our turn. Now, 
Athena's in a bad spot, because even if the survivor's knocked down, you can't just walk over the survivor. But we're going to go ahead and move E first. One, two, three, four. And she'll attack from here. Why? I just don't want her in the front of the White Lion's arc. So Eve attacks with the Bone Blade. She needs a six plus to hit. And there's a nine, so that's one hit. It is the beast flank. So there is a wound result. Even though there's a wound reaction, I still want to hurt him. So it's a strength two. I need a six plus. There's a seven. So I do wound him. So here's the AI card we're removing. And the wound states, cats hate this. The monster is very upset. Attacker gains the priority target token. Okay. Well, not so bad. So we'll take the priority target token. We'll place it under Eve, meaning she is the target the next time the white lion attacks. Now we can move at him. One, two, three, four, five. Have to walk all around Athena. He'll attack twice with his bone axe. It's a six plus. He's in the rear. It's a five plus. He misses twice. Come on. You've got to hit hard. Um, okay. Well, Athena is going to be the target next turn. So one, two, three. We're going to move him right in front of the white lion. Try to scratch his eyes out with fist and tooth. It is a eight plus to hit him. I did get a nine. So that's one hit. And the hit location is the beast chest. If I fail, he's going to run Zeus over. So let's try not to fail. It is a strength one because I have a one modifier. He's a toughness eight. So I'm going to need a seven to wound this white lion. Come on. That's a one. That's a <laughs> that's a definite miss. Failure. Full move monsters forward in a straight line. Any survivors suffer grab. Grab means they're knocked down in front of the white lion and they suffer one damage per monster level. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll drop Zeus right here, because that makes the most sense. Um, I think the white line was there. So Zeus was there. Okay. Um, and Zeus is going to take one damage, and he's going to take it to the waste. Excellent, because I do have... Oh, he has no armor left on the waste. Okay, so Zeus does get hit once, and he's going to take a light injury to the waste. Okay, um... Now it's the White Lion's turn. Yes. So the monster controller will move over to Eve. And she's the target. She's got the priority target token. And it is Combo Claw. So all these pick targets don't matter. She is the target. So he's going to move. One, two, three, four, five, six. One. No, he must have been here. You guys got to keep me honest because she actually hit him with the uh, the bone sword. Okay, so he moves up there and he's going to attack her. Okay. Uh, closest threat facing in range, doesn't matter. Closest threat in field of view, doesn't matter. It's her. Move and attack. So it's two attacks. It's a four plus to actually hit. So she's in the grass. So it's a four plus, five plus. It's a six plus to hit her. So let's see what happens. Two and a three. Two misses. If the attack deals damage more to more, more than once, draw another AI card. Oh, lost hand. Lost hand. I should have read the whole thing. Um, the white lion stares sadly at its bloody stump. Any adjacent survivor gains plus one understanding once per lifetime. So he moves... And then he tries to attack, um, and that's what happens. Let me actually read Persistent Injury in the rule book and see what happens. Give me a second.
Okay, that's what I thought. So, coming back here, we draw a combo claw, and it says we go right to the persistent injury of lost hand. So the white lion stares sadly at its bloody stump. Any adjacent survivors gain plus one understanding once per lifetime. So he, uh, Zeus is an adjacent survivor, and we'll give him plus one understanding. So what the book said was if there is a persistent injury that is affected, nothing on the card matters. We go right to the uh, persistent injury. So he gets that once in a lifetime. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this on additional notes off to this side. So so I put strange hand, one understanding, once per lifetime. Okay. So if that were to happen to him again, he doesn't actually get to get that understanding uh, because he's already seen it once. He's already got that understanding. So the monster turn is over. And this grab actually happened on our turn. So once again, Zeus gets to stand up. Athena stands up. And unfortunately, the white lion is far away from us. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to move Adam first. One, two, three, four, five. The reason is because Adam's going to use his headband. So let's find out what these last AI cards are. So Bloody Claw and grasp. So bloody claw, claw is a nasty one. And grasp is closest knockdown survivor, closest survivor in range, and then the white lion isolates its prey full move and the target suffers grab. So both of these are actually pretty nasty. Um, I don't know if we're actually going to wound this white lion because Zeus is the only one that can actually attack it from where he is. And Zeus is going to use fist and tooth. So maybe we want to use grab. Um, hmm. Away from all threats. Yeah, we're going to have to put Bloody Claw at the top um, and hope that Zeus can actually remove that AI card. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Give Zeus the best opportunity we can. He's going to get two attacks. And it's a 7 plus to hit him. So there's one 7. So that wound location is the Beast Temple. There is a failure action on it. So Zeus has plus 1 strength. So you're looking at a 7 to wound him. That did not wound him. So perform basic action, target the attacker. So he'll get attacked twice. The basic action on the White Lion is 2 attacks, the 2 plus to hit. Two fours, that'd be two hits, and it's one damage. Zeus cannot use his survival because it is our turn. So he can't use survival to dodge because you can only do that on the White Lion's turn. So waste and body. So heavy's on both for Zeus, and he gets knocked down. Um, Athena's going to move up, um, and I believe, because Combo Claw said ignore everything, Eve has not been the target of an attack yet, so he will move, and we get to move him, one, two, three, four, five, six, so let's move Eve back one. So that she's out of range, and um, and that'll be the end of our turn. So there is a method to my madness and a strategy for how I'm doing this. All right. So the monster controller token moves to Zeus. And we will draw an AI card for the monster. And it is Bloody Claw, closest survivor with the most bleeding tokens. All survivors have two bleeding tokens, but that really doesn't matter because 
Eve has made the lion so mad, the lion's going to target her. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And wow. Let's read the verbiage on the card. It says the white lion stares sadly at its bloody stump. Any adjacent survivor gains plus one understanding once per lifetime. Okay. Well, um, this was from Bloody Claw. The white lost hand, but I think it's because of the persistent injury of lost hand, he gets that. So let's go ahead and change the note we took. It said strange hand plus one understanding. What we probably should have put was lost hand. Lost hand once per lifetime. So he doesn't get that because the white lion sadly just looks at his bloody stump. Okay. Well, that leaves the white lion there, which, again, he still hasn't targeted Eve. So Eve's still going to be the target of the attack. Um, so the white lion, it's the end of his turn. Zeus stands up. Because, remember, Zeus was knocked down on our turn again. And Zeus is going to try this again. Now, he, he really cannot get hit again. He's got two damage to his body and two damage to his waist already. So he's on the verge of being my first casualty, but he'll attack anyway. A two and a six. I need a seven because I'm in the rear arc. And so that's the end of his turn. We'll go ahead and use Adam. One, two, three, four. No, we'll go ahead and go three. Because Athena can actually get into the front of the white line because he'll go around to get to Eve. So, yeah. We'll go and attack with Adam. So Adam has the axe. It is a six plus to hit. Two misses. And Athena's going to run right up. And just like Zeus did, she's going to try to scratch his eyes out. She needs an eight because she has no weapon. She's using fist and tooth. Two fives, that's two misses. Monster Controller is going to move over to Adam. Okay. And the monster is going to grasp. Okay. Closest knockdown survivor in range. Well, it doesn't matter. He's going to target Athena. So he'll try to move to get to her. One, two, three, four, five, six. He can't get to her. And that was my last, AI, or the White Lion's last AI card. We're going to go ahead and shuffle this AI deck. There are a lot of AI cards left. We have not done nearly as much damage to this line now as I would like because Adam really sucks with this axe. So... If he keeps doing this, I'm going to give the axe to somebody else because he really is supposed to be our hero here, and he's turning out to not be the most heroic person. Ten, we won't cut the AI deck. And it is our turn now. She was targeted, so off goes the priority target token. And like I do on most times, I'm going to move her. One, two, three, four, five. So she's still in the grass. She's going to attack from the side. It is two attacks. It's a six plus to hit the white lion. It is a seven and a two. So the hit location is the fleshy gut. There is a failure. So it is a strength two weapon. He's a toughness eight, so I need a six. I did get a six, exactly. So there goes an AI card, and we do not read the failure reaction. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, Adam, I've been trash talking you. So uh, you do have the bone axe. It's two attacks. It's a six plus five plus because you're in the blind spot. Five plus the hit. That's one hit. And straining neck. So let's see if he can crit this. There is no negative reactions to this. So it is a strength three plus his one. It's a four modifier. He's got an eight, eight toughness. I need a four. I failed to wound. Athena. Athena's going to move four. She's going to attack from the rear with fist and two. She needs sevens. Two misses. And... Zeus. 
he can't get there, so he's just going to stop right there. Okay, rotating the monster controller to Athena and Maul. So Maul says, victim of grab last round. Nobody got grabbed last round. Closest knockdown survivor in range. There is no knockdown survivor, so he's just going to sniff, meaning that everybody's going to be a threat next turn. So that's not a bad thing. So we'll go ahead and attack. Let's go ahead and use Adam first since he has the axe. He's going to need fives to hit him. That's a five and a four. It's one hit. It is to the beast's ear. So Adam's going to need a four to wound. That's a six. Finally, Adam does something. Here's the AI card. And now Adam's going to go one, two, three, four. So that he gets in the grass, but I'm going to free up this blind spot for somebody. Um, let's go ahead and do Athena next. So Athena's going to use Fist and Tooth. She needs seven to hit. That's one hit. That's an eight. So that hit location is the beast's elbow. And if she fails, the monster is going to move forward. So she'll go ahead and try to wound. And she has no modifiers, so she's just going to need an eight. That's a nine. Okay, so Fist and Tooth is deadly. It's a plus one luck when you're using Fist and Tooth to wound. So a nine actually ends up being a critical wound. So we take an AI card and we read the critical wound. The monster howls in pain as the blow breaks its elbow with a sickening crunch. Non-death survivors gain plus three insanity and may stand if knocked down. We've seen this before, but we still get it. So three insanity takes our survivors six 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 and six not bad so she hits one two three four she's going to go on the grass to free up a blind spot for Zeus one two okay Zeus moves forward and he's going to do the same thing, try to attack. So he needs sevens to hit. That is a nine and a seven, two hits. OK, so Beast Ribs, which if the attacker has three plus understanding. So that reaction is not going to do anything for us. Uh, this one says perform basic action, target the attacker if I fail. So we'll do it in that order. We'll hit the Beast Ribs first, or try to. He's got a plus one strength, so he needs a seven to wound the white line. That's a nine. That's a critical wound on the white line. Again, fist and tooth, plus one. So it's a nine and ten to crit. Um, the force of the blow breaks the white lion's ribs, weakening it. So here's the AI card damage. And the white lion gains minus one toughness token. We'll take that. So with the minus one toughness token, he's a little bit easier to wound. So again, Zeus is going to need a seven. With the minus one toughness, he's going to need a six to wound him. That's a crit. <laughs> okay, Zeus, you're my hero. Here's an AI card. And critical wound. The torn muscle causes agonizing pain. Discard one mood currently in play. We don't have any moods in play. The white lion is knocked down. Excellent. While the not monster is knocked down, all reactions are canceled and the hit rolls succeed on a 3+. plus. Okay. So, excellent. So we're looking at 3 health left on the white lion, and he's knocked down. Unfortunately, this is the end of the round. We have one person left. So she'll just stay in the grass. There's no reason for her to move around the back, but she hits on a 3+. plus. So two shots, 3 plus to hit. That's a 9 and a 7. She does have a bone blade. No trap, no trap. Okay. Um, the beast sprout. We cancel all these, uh, all these reactions here. Um, this one's going to give us possibly a resource. That one gives him a minus one accuracy. It doesn't really matter which we do. So we're going to go ahead and hit the beast brow first. So while he's sitting on the ground, she's going to try to smash his brow with her sword. It is a strength two. She needs a six. Five because of the minus one toughness. So she needs fives to wound. That is not a wound on the beast brow. 
and that is not a wound on the soft belt. So that was a waste of two really good, good hit location cards. Okay, well, it's the end of the turn, so the white lane is going to stand up. The monster controller is Eve. Maybe after that performance, we'll have him attack her. And bat around. Closest threat facing. Well, we can't because the closest threat facing is Athena. So we can make the white line go like this. I think we're going to have him come down here and go like that. So it is two attacks and it is a five plus to hit. Actually, it's going to be a seven plus because she is in the grass. So a seven plus to hit her. It's a nine and a seven. And after damage, she's going to suffer one brain damage. Okay? So what locations is she going to get hit in? The body and the hand. So I tell you what Eve's going to do. She's going to use her survival to dodge the body. And she will take the injury to the hand. And the reason is because she has two hits on the body already. And she will take one brain damage because he's playing with her and she don't like it. Actually, Maul and Bat Around are not are, are the two of the AI cards we have left. So that's not so bad, actually. Um, and now it is our turn. We will go ahead and I will move. I think... Oh, she only has Fist and Tooth. I'm going to move her to the, to the rear. Actually, I'm going to move her to the side. That will give both of those characters a chance to hit. So... Eve is going to need an 8 plus to hit. That's a 10 and a 2. I was kind of hoping she would miss. Um, it is the Beast Femur. There's no negative reaction, though. So with a minus 1 toughness and 0 toughness, or 0 strength for the uh, Fist and Tooth, uh, she's going to need a 7 to wound this white line. That's an 8. Wow, she actually did something. So now we know what the two AI cards we have left are. So good job. Good job, Athena. Um, Zeus is going to go ahead and attack. Again, I'm kind of hoping he might miss, but I'm not going to have him do nothing. So here's two attacks. That's one hit on the White Lion. It's impervious. Not a big deal. He can only crit this. It's a seven, so that's nothing. And now he's going to move. One, two. Okay, um, Eve. One, two, three, four. Eve's going to move into this blind spot. Two attacks. It's a six plus. It's a five plus for the blind spot, so a five plus to hit. That is two hits. We're getting pretty low on this hit location, Jack, and I have not seen the trap yet. Well, I've seen it once, but I haven't seen it the second time. This failure moves them forward. This really doesn't do anything, so we're going to hit the beast knee first. So it's got a strength of two. He's got a minus one toughness, so I need a five to wound him. That fails. Same thing on this one. I need a five. That fails. He's going to move forward. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Um, we know what the two cards are, so i tell you what I'm going to do. Um... I really wish I could get Adam into that grass. One, two, three, four, five. We could make Adam the next target, and depending on what the AI card is, if it's if it's bat around or if it is um, Maul, Maul's just going to make him sniff. So we get Adam as close as we can. Bat around is a five plus to hit, and Adam has almost all of his hit locations. He's got armor still at the head location. And he's only got one light injury to the leg. So are we going to cut the deck? Yes, we are. Okay. So, um, yeah, Adam's going to go one, two, three, four, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Let's make Adam the target. So the AI deck's going to go, or the monster controller's going to go to Zeus. We're going to draw this card, and it's Maul. So victim of grab last round. Again, nobody got grab last round. Closest knockdown survivor, nobody. He's just going to sniff. Again, not a bad card to have at the end because 
if it's Maul again, he's just going to sniff. Everybody becomes a target, uh, a threat. Um, and that really doesn't do anything for him. Um, yeah, all survivors are now threats, despite any effects that say otherwise. So, sniff is not bad for Maul. Let's just try to wound him and get rid of this bat around. One, two, three, four. Adam's going to attack twice. Let's do this, Adam. You've got the axe. You can do this. Two attacks. It's a five plus because I'm in the rear. Two twos. Adam, you're killing me. Um, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. We're charging up on him. And we know what this AI card is. So, it's got bat around. It's the closest threat facing in range. Okay, well, nobody's facing him. It's the closest threat in field of view. Everyone's in field of view except for Adam. She's one away, and she's one away. So we're going to choose Athena, because if I choose Eve, he's going to collide with Adam. So he's going to go down one to attack Athena. And Athena's only got one damage to the one light damage to the body. Bat around is a five plus to hit. So it's a five plus to hit her. So that's two hits. And it's going to hit her in the body and the hand. So that's the heavy to the body. She does have one survival. I think I'm going to use that one survival and dodge the body so she won't get knocked down. Again, we'll shuffle these cards up. Okay. All right, I really wish I knew where that trap was. We are, we're getting danger close. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Athena will attack from the back. So two attacks, fist and two. She needs a seven. She got a crit. She hit the fuzzy groin, so she grabs him in the balls. And does she rip off the balls? It's a six. She actually needed a seven to wound, so nothing happens. Uh, Adam, one, two, three, four. Okay, Adam, come on with his bone action. You, you have the weapon that we need. It's two attacks. It's a five plus on the rear. It's one hit. It's the beast tail. I really need you to crit. Uh, it's a four. So... It's a toughness of eight for the white lion. He's got three strength for the bone axe, one for the uh, his plus one permanent strength, and minus one toughness. He only needed a three. So he actually did wound the white lion. Now here's the problem. Reflex. Full move the white lion. One, two, three, four, five, six. And he grabs Eve, drops her, and Eve's going to take one damage to the body. And here's what I was afraid of. So she's going to take a severe injury. Because Adam can't hit the axe. So he's actually going to kill his mate because he failed to attack. So critical wound to the body. Oops, sorry. Getting a little animated because Adam's making me mad. It's a four. So gaping chest wound. So for minus one permanent strength, the injury is permanent and can be recorded multiple times. Gain a bleeding token. All right. So here's the bleeding token. She gets herself minus one permanent strength. Gaping chest wound. Gaping chest wound. There it is. Okay, she didn't fill in a box, but she did get grabbed, so she's not down anyways. Um, and that's what Gaping Chest Wound does. So really, it gave her a minus one permanent strength. So I don't, I don't think she's going to die from bleed this round. All right, last person. One, two, three, four, five. Zeus. Attacking from the back, he needs sevens. So there's a ten, lantern ten. It is the beast maw. There is a failure. He's going to need a... He's got a plus one strength, minus one toughness token. He needs a six. That's a seven. 
So he didn't fail. And so that would actually be the last AI card in the deck. He's got one more wound because, um, because he is got his basic card left. So the monster controller will rotate to Athena. His basic action states, closest survivor in field of view. So that would be Athena, or Eve, I'm sorry. She is the closest survivor in his field of view. So he'll go ahead and attack twice. He needs a two plus to hit her. So it's an eight and a one. It's one hit. Anything but the body, that's the foot. So that's her first injury to the foot. Not bad. She might survive yet. It's the end of his turn. She stands up. And she's going to move one, two, three, four into the grass. I really don't want Zeus to get hit either. I, I have this horrible feeling that the trap is going to be coming up. Um, there's four cards left. What are the chances? Zeus is going to attack twice. He needs a seven. Two sixes. He breathes a sigh of relief. One. Two. All right. Adam's going to go one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And the monster controller will go to Eve. And let's see what this monster does. Basic action is closest survivor in field of view. Everyone's in field of view. The closest survivor is Athena because, well, it could be anybody. Let's go ahead and make it Adam. So Adam gets attacked. He's got plus two evasion. He's in the grass. That's another plus two. So plus four. So it's a two plus. Three plus four plus. Five plus six plus. Two attacks, six plus to hit Adam. It's a two and a nine, so one hit. So we'll take that to the hand. Let's see what Adam's got. So that's his first injury to the arm location. And a thing is going to move. One, two, three, four. No. Adam's going to just try to hit him. Two axe shots. I, I really don't want to hit him twice. Let's see. Zeus is going to go one. Zeus is going to try to hit him. He needs eights from that location. So miss, miss. Athena is going to come around. She needs eights from that location. A three and a five. Adam. Adam, Adam, Adam. All right, Adam. This is your chance. Two attacks. It's a six plus. One hit. I only wanted one. I only need one. I don't want this to be the trap. Of course it is. Um, attacker is doomed. Perform basic action. Target the attacker. That's all he can do is basic action. Anyways. Um, he doesn't have any survival, so it really doesn't matter. So we'll do a basic action. First thing I'll do is shuffle this hit location card. Or deck. Okay, do I cut it? I don't. Okay. And he's going to do two attacks on Adam. Again, Adam's got two evasion. He's in the grass for two. It's a two plus, three plus, four plus, five plus, six plus to hit Adam. Two attacks. It's a five and a lantern. He does get hit once, and he gets hit in the foot. All right, so unfortunately, that will knock Adam down. Um, we could have Adam stand up. I think we're going to have to do that. We do have language, which we have encouraged. So Zeus is going to use his revival to tell Adam to stand up. You're the guy with the weapon. Stand up. And then Zeus is going to... That was his survival. Zeus is going to go one, two, three, four, five. Why? Because Zeus, is, Zeus, Zeus has got heavy injuries on two locations. Adam's going to get away from the front. One, two, three, four, five. Adam's going to attack twice with his axe from the rear. He needs fives. He missed twice. Adam. Um, seriously. Um, Athena. To the rear. She needs sevens. That's one hit. There's no negatives. There's a wound reaction. But if I can wound him, um, it's actually going to kill him. That's a nine. So that's a crit. 
So not only did I kill him, the white lion is knocked down. Okay, well, that doesn't matter because the white lion is laying on his side because he's dead anyways. Wow, that was uh, a pretty scary fight. But at least it's over now. So looking at the end of the fight, we did get these two resources plus, plus others. We did actually get a bone blade. Um, I think the worst thing that happened was Eve gets a negative one strength permanently uh, because Adam sucks with this axe. So everybody's going to get a hunt experience. Hunt experience, Athena gets one. Eve, Zeus, and Adam have all aged. So they are now at age 20. Okay, so we'll do this in order in the book. And if we go down to Showdown with the White Lion, Victory, level one, one Hunt XP. So at this point, we all age. So as soon as we fill in the box, we immediately go to age. And we give everybody a weapon proficiency. And we roll on this chart. So what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to tell you what. Um, Adam's going to get fist and tooth. Why? Because you can't hit with the bone axe. And I'm going to give Zeus the bone axe. So he gets an axe proficiency. And the other item we actually have is the sword. So... Oh, sorry, wrong sheet. The sword, so Eve, who has the sword, will get sword proficiency. All right. The next thing we do is we roll on this chart. So let's go ahead and roll for Adam. 2d10, 4. Adam's going to get plus 1 permanent strength. So fist and tooth with plus 2 strength is actually not too bad. Um, we'll go ahead and do Zeus. Maybe Zeus can get a plus one. An 11. So he'll get a random fighting art. We'll do that in a second. And Eve, 15. She's also going to get a random fighting art. Okay, so I got the fighting art deck. I'm going to shuffle these and pull one fighting art at random. So... Zeus, what's your fighting art? So Zeus gets crazed. On a perfect hit, you gain an insanity. Not the best. Crazed. Um, effect. Perfect hit equals one insanity. Okay. We go ahead and archive this now, putting it back in the fighting art deck, because it could actually possibly be drawn again. And Eve, try to get something better other than the fact that you're crazy. Okay, and Eve is going to get Leader. Whenever you encourage a survivor, they gain plus one speed token until the end of the round. Once per hunt phase, you can inspire another survivor. They use your understanding and encourage to resolve a hunt or story event. Example, if you have three plus courage, you can inspire another survivor to walk the path of the brave during overwhelming darkness. Okay? Um, not bad. Plus one speed token is pretty good. So encourage equals plus one speed and then hunt phase, use courage and understanding. Okay, again, not, not bad. It's not the best fighting arts that I drew, but um, yeah, I'll deal with it. Plus 100. Plus one weapon proficiency level. We don't have a weapon proficiency yet. 
um, because we didn't have it during the showdown phase. So next time we go out, we'll actually be able to use that plus one weapon proficiency level. And then rewards. Okay, rewards. Uh, the first time the white line is defeated, add Katerium to the settlement locations. Okay, we'll add Katerium. The group gains the following rewards. It is four basic and four white lion. So in addition to the shimmering main and the iron we got, we are going to get the testes. Let me get that last time. The sinew, the great cat bones, and a tail. Really was hoping we were going to pull out the uh, cat's eye, but get the cat eye circlet. Cat eye circlet is. Uh, some people use it a lot, some people don't, because I, I wouldn't say that it breaks the game, but it, it makes the showdown easier. Um, we'll also get a hide, a love juice, monster bone, and monster organ. Excellent. Excellent because we got bones, organ, and hide, which is going to allow us to innovate. Okay. Um, so that was the that was the hunt the hunt phase and the showdown. Um, I will save uh, the settlement phase for uh, my next video, and uh, I'm gonna I think I'm gonna split the hunt. Usually doesn't take that long, so I'm gonna include the hunt with the showdown, um, and then I will do a settlement phase video uh, in between. That is just the settlement phase because I know at the beginning of the um, at the beginning of the campaign, the settlement phase doesn't take that long. But much later in the campaign, the settlement phase can be one of the longest phases as you go through it and decide what you're going to do with your resources and whatnot. So I hope you enjoyed this fight. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, this new style of video I'm trying uh, using a different software. I'll try to get a better camera because I know it's slightly blurry. Um, and join me again my next video. Uh, when I will go ahead and uh, enter Lantern Year number one um, for my settlement. So, successful showdown. Um, got some good resources. We'll see what we're going to do with it. So, goodbye for now.